Today's lesson can be found on page 408 of your textbook. The title is to multiply whole numbers and decimals. So our goal, our objective for today is how can we find the product of a whole number and a decimal? Let's see. Here's the whole number, 4, and we're going to multiply that by a decimal number, 0 0.7 or 7 tenths. We will use what we've already learned, which is to multiply fractions. Let's go ahead and transform the 4 into a fraction. That would become 4 over 1. We multiply that by 7 tenths. How can we transform this into a fraction? Okay. Exactly how we say it, 7 tenths. I understand, as you can readily see, that we can do some cross-cancellation between the 4 and the 10. However, for today's exercise, we are just going to go ahead and multiply the numerators as we see it. So 4 times 7 equals to 28, and 1 times 10 equals to 10. You can see that this is top-heavy, so we need to change this into a mixed number. 10 goes into 28 two times with a remainder of 8, and the denominator stays the same. The first thing you see here is that 8 and 10 um, can be simplified. However, our goal is how can we solve 4 times uh, 0 0.7? We want to show our answer not in a fraction form. We want to show our answer in decimal form. So it becomes 2 and 8 tenths. Okay, remember the decimal point is called and, and this right here is the tenth place value. You may be asking yourself, is there an easier, quicker way to find the product? And the answer is yes. Let's give that a try. 0.7 and you're going to multiply that by 4. There are two steps when uh, multiplying a whole number with a decimal number. The very first step is to multiply regularly. 4 times 7 is 28. So we put an 8 at the bottom and up goes a 2. 4 times 0 is 0 plus 2 equals to 2. Remember to make sure that you are keeping your place values and that all the numbers are aligned. Step number two then is for you to ask yourself how many numbers are found after the decimal point. You see that the decimal point is right here in your problem and you want to know how many numbers are there after it. In this case, there is only one, and you can go ahead and write them one there. So therefore, in your answer, there will be only one place value after the decimal point. So the answer of 4 times 0 0.7 is 2.8 or 2 and 8 tenths. Let's try another problem. The problem is 8 times 5 and 9 tenths, or 8 times 5.9. 8 times 9 is 72, and up goes a 7. 8 times 5 is 40, plus 7 becomes 47. Then step number 2 says, how many spaces are there after the decimal point? And you see the decimal point is right here, and we can see that there's only one space after, one place value after the decimal point. And we can go ahead and write that over here. So therefore, our answer then is going to also have only one place 
after the place value. You may be asking, can't we just bring down the decimal point? And the answer is a resounding no. You can't. It may look like it works now, but as we progress on these lessons, you will see that it will not work. So don't even try it. Let's go ahead then and try one final example. The problem is 0 0.515 times 7. Another way to say it is 515 thousandths times 7. Again, step number one is to multiply regularly. 7 times 5 is 35. Go ahead and write 35 and carry the 3. 7 times 1 is 7 plus 3 that equals to 10. Up goes a 1. 7 times 5 is 35 plus 1 is 36. And up goes the 3. 7 times 0, 0 plus the 3 becomes a 3. Then we get to step number 2. This is when we need to ask ourselves, how many places are there after the decimal point? Let's go back to the problem. I find a decimal point right here, and I see that there is one, two, three spaces after it. So I'm going to go ahead and put the number three here to help me remember. I'm going to move down to my answer, and I'll tell myself I need one, two, three spaces. And then I will put the decimal point. So therefore, the answer then to 7 times 515 thousandths is 3 and 605 thousandths. Notice that we began with three decimal, three places after the decimal point. And when we came down to our answer, we still have three places after the decimal point. So today you have learned how to multiply whole numbers and decimals. Tomorrow, you're going to learn how to use rounding in order to estimate the products of decimal factors. Stay tuned.